So let's say you're asked a question in your organic chemistry class, and that is to take some alkyl halide and turn into a, an amine, and specifically turn into a primary amine. Well, how can you go about doing that? Well, right now, we do know a few ways to do that. You know, simply take whatever your amine is, or take whatever your um, alkyl halide is, you're going to combine that with ammonia, and just like that, we have our primary amine. But unfortunately, we know that when we do this reaction, we do get some byproducts. And those byproducts are every single form of that um, alkyl chain attached to that amine in the secondary, uh, tertiary, and even the quaternary stage. So what that looks like, or what, I, what I'm trying to mean by that is you'll get this as a byproduct. So that's our secondary amine. Then you'll also get, uh, I said, the uh, tertiary amine, and then finally you'll get the you'll get the quaternary um, amine. And this should have a positive charge like that. Um, and so this isn't very helpful because it um, it's not very exclusive only to that primary amine that we want to isolate. And it, it's also wasteful of material, so anybody that asks you to do this, if you're working in an industry, might be upset if this is what you suggested because it's not very efficient and it wastes time and money. So instead, a better reaction could be suggested, and that is what we're going to talk about, and it is the Gabriel synthesis. So let me clear the page and we will talk about the Gabriel synthesis. So up here... Gabriel synthesis. Okay, what does the Gabriel synthesis look like? Well, essentially, it, nothing very special. The only thing to it that uh, that makes it so incredible for making these primary means is the use of the uh, reagent thalamid, and that is spelled that is spelled like this. I think that is the correct spelling of this, um, of thalamid. But what does thalamid look like? It looks like this thing. Looks like we're going to start a benzene ring, kind of. And then a secondary ring. Just like that. And that's our thalamid. And so we're going to utilize that to create our primary mean for us. So let's go ahead and get into that. Uh, I'm going to start um, with our thalamid. Just like this. And we're, um, we're asked to just, for example, let me draw it or write it off to the side. Um, create, I don't know, just do the same one just for simplicity. Um, so, FAN amine. Or ethylamine. Whichever one <laughs> you want to you want to use. So how do we do this? Well, almost exactly the same way. We're just going to introduce our alkyl halide. So our alkyl halide, we're going to use bromoethane, and then we're also going to use um, some sort of a base. And so I'm going to use just hydroxide for now. And so now let's go ahead and, and go through this. So um, what do uh, what do we expect to happen? Well, take the thing that's highest in energy, so that'd be our hydroxide, and let it pull off a, a proton from, from this nitrogen. And so let's go ahead and do that so we can see what we get. So we're going to keep everything on the left. We're going to keep everything on the left just about the same. We're not going to mess with that. There's our nitrogen, and it now has that extra lone pair. 
So this is, next part's a little bit weird because we usually see um, nitrogen molecules or mo molecules that have nitrogen in them as acting, um, if anything, they're gonna be acting as a base. Um, at least that's what we've seen as a trend. But in this particular case, um, we'll see it acting not as a base, but instead as a nucleophile. And so if we know it acts as a nucleophile, um, well, we can predict that what will happen is um, it's going to attack something that's electron deficient. And so what's electron deficient? Well, throughout organic chemistry, we know that alkyl halides are um, good candidates for that electron deficient spot. And so we'll see this mechanism taking place. So when this happens, let's go ahead and draw our intermediate that we get from this. Just like that. And I'll try to be consistent with my colors again. Great, so now what do we get to happen? Well, we have more hydroxide just floating around in solution, so why not do something with it? Right, so here's our hydroxide. What is it going to do? Well, take it from some place that's high in energy and try to drop it down a bit in, in energy. Well, when we do that, or how, how we can do that is noticing that, again, we have locations of um, electron deficiency. Uh, it's right here and right here. These uh, carbonyl carbons we know are uh, slightly delta positive, and so we can see that those electrons will be attracted to that carbonyl and, oops, wrong arrow. When that happens, um, instead of doing what we normally would think, which is what I just did, we will flop electrons down onto nitrogen. And in truth, you could have, you could have, I'm gonna do this in a different color, you could have flopped electrons onto that um, that carbonyl's oxygen, but you you would just end up going through a bunch of steps to get back to the same place that we're going to get to right now. So, um, get my green out. So everything on the left stayed the same. We have our carbonyl. And then we know we've broken that bond. Oops, my pen is having a hard time. There we go. And we have this OH as well as an extra pair of electrons on that nitrogen. So what happens now? Again, follow the highest energy thing. So I would expect in this reaction, um, at this particular point in our intermediate, to see an intramolecular proton transfer. So let's do that. We see those arrows happening. Then we get down to this next intermediate. We have an O minus now, and I will recolor that pink. Just like that. And so now what do we do? Again, we have tons of, of hydroxide floating around in solution. So let's do the same thing over again. And before I do that, let me write what I missed. There should be an H on that nitrogen. Okay, now going back, tons of hydroxide in solution. We're gonna do the same exact thing, attacking that delta positive carbon. Um, when, when that happens, those electrons in, do the right color. When, when we do that, those electrons will flop down onto that nitrogen, essentially kicking it out. So we get this. So our thalamid has now lost its it's nitrogen. And O minus, and this is OH. OK. 
great. Um, when that nitrogen fell off, it fell off as a minus, or negatively charged. So we, we have my H right there. We now just have to do something with the highest energy thing. That's going to be our nitrogen with that negative charge. It's going to see something that's acidic, this carboxylic acid, and it's going to want to pull that, uh, pull that proton off. So let's do this. Pulling off the proton and getting to our, and getting to our final answer. I will do in red. There's our nitrogen and it has its two protons and nothing further happens. Um, nothing further happens. So we are effectively creating our um, primary amine.